Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do vlogs, travel, and some camera stuff. And today I wanna to talk a little bit more about the Sony FX3. So we've gotten some specs that came out more about it. And what is gonna be the difference between the Sony FX3 and the Sony A7S3? The more we learn about it, the more it sounds like they've just completely repurposed the Sony A7S3 and put it in a steampunk type body and saying it's a cinema camera now. You can't just repackage something completely and then maybe charge somebody a premium for it. So what are some of the things they can do differently to justify it even existing? But before I go over what they can do differently, let me go over first these leaked specs. So apparently they both have the same 12 megapixel sensor. It has 4K 120, the same as the A7S 3 It has IBIS, which is surprising. You didn't think that they'd actually give you IBIS in a cinema camera. I'm glad they did. They both have stills mode, so apparently they have basically the same photo capabilities. So if you go down the list, it really doesn't look like there's much differences. A lot of people were hoping that the FX3 would maybe have internal NDs. It doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. They were hoping maybe that they would downsample from 6K, but if they have the same sensor, doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case either. So what are some of the differences besides just the aesthetics? Because to me, that's not really just worth a whole new camera. So I decided to get outside the studio today because it's very rare we get a really good snow, but I figured why not talk about cameras while walking in the snow? So, you know, that's why we're here. There are a few things I think that they can do differently and I hope that they are gonna do differently. So apparently the FX3 has active cooling and it has a fan inside. So if you're gonna have a fan, is it possible you're gonna add maybe 4K raw to the mix? I know Gaston, the person who was actually leaking a lot of this information, was saying that he thinks that maybe they'll actually do a firmware update on the FX6 and then the FX3 as well and possibly add raw. Would that make it different enough from the A7S3 to make it worth it? I don't know, I guess that just depends on who you are. The other thing that it seems like they're already doing is they're adding S-Cinetone, which is their cinema profile that was added to the A1 and is not on the Sony A7S3. To me, that's super cool, I'm glad it's on there, but I hope that they're not just going to leave that off that Sony A7S3 just so that they can have it on that and like that's a big difference. I think that Cinetone or S-Cinetone should be put onto the a7s3 as well in a firmware update so besides possible 4k raw and adding the s cine tone which hopefully will come to a7s3 as well what can they do to differentiate themselves one thing that i really hope that they do and i think they really need to do is to add a much better screen to the back of that camera. If you're not gonna have the EVF, and this is gonna be a cinema camera, you really need a much higher quality, brighter screen that goes onto the back of this camera. Another thing that they could do with that screen is possibly add false colors and other wave formats that are usually found in cinema cameras or on external recorders that are not found in the Sony a7S 3 I think that that could be a big advantage for it. Will those small changes actually make it worth it? Well, I mean, I really don't know. It's gonna be up to each person to make that decision on their own. But, you know, maybe with those small changes and just the change in ergonomics and having it maybe fit better on their Air Peak drone that's going to be coming out, maybe that's going to be enough for some people to maybe pick up an additional one of these on top of their Sony A7S 3 or maybe possibly pick this over the Sony A7S 3 because it fits their needs more. I know for myself, I am extremely interested in this camera in particular and also the Sony a7S III, but I am personally looking for a good, you know, video centric camera that, you know, is in a DSLR style body. I shoot Canon right now and I'm gonna continue to shoot Canon for my stills, but I'm really just looking for a video centric camera. Usually I shoot in more tropical environments and I don't shoot in the snow. And so when I'm doing that, I really wanna make sure I have a really good reliable camera that's not gonna overheat at all. I know the R5 has gotten so much better but I just kind of want something more on a, on a cinema side. And so I'm really interested in getting Sony for video and this FX3 might be the camera for me. But drop in the comment section below and let me know, do you think those few changes will make a difference for you? Do you think that there's maybe some other changes they can make that I'm not thinking about? 
are you already satisfied with what they're saying? Basically a Sony a7S 3 in a cinema style body. Is that enough for you already? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. And if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And until next time, peace. How you do VO? Bad, <laughs> terrible. <laughs>